Sweden is stepping up the country's security and is calling up 7,000 reservists to boost the existing army. The defence minister cited Russia's rearmament as a reason behind the move. It's not the first time Sweden has uh, been on uh, guard against Russian aggression. As you're about to see there on my shoulder here, you may remember that back in October. That blurry image was enough to uh, get a lot of people on the lookout for what they thought was a phantom submarine. They were the best pictures they were at the time. Since no one knew exactly what it was, of course, lots of ideas, everything from Vladimir Putin, uh, that was a joke, to the Loch Ness Monster. The sighting came to nothing after a week of fruitless searching, almost $3 million spent. Let's bring in uh, Jan Ober, director of the Swedish pro-peace think tank. How are they, Jan? Hello. What is Sweden doing here, then? It's talking about um, bringing in thousands of reservists to train them up for a month. Should we read anything into it? Anything alarming there? Or is it kind of ordinary? I think not. Depends on who we are. I don't think it's very threatening to the world. Um, it could be very much just to show that we are doing something. I mean, you have to follow up on the fact that the Swedish media and the p political debate in this country is uh, very um, anti-Russian and that the interpretation of what happened in Ukraine has not been um, very balanced. Mm. Um, and, I mean, the, the whole thing comes from the uh, Ukraine crisis, and uh, that was not predominantly created by Russia, but by the West. Looking at it with a level head, uh, is, is it a sort of a growing paranoia? What can be done here? I mean, surely not everybody in Sweden thinks that uh, you know, Russia's the big bad bear and is about to invade, do they? No, but uh, this um, alleged object, whatever it was, if there was any in the uh, archipelago or outside Stockholm, had the same effect. You know, um, if you say that there's somebody foreign and strange and dangerous, Hello. you also have to do something about it. One thing is to re increase the military expenditures in Sweden. The other one is to do things like this. And the third thing, of course, is to have a, discu a discussion or discourse here, which is... Uh, um, unbalanced, I would say unbalanced in the sense that um, if the whole thing started with the Ukraine crisis, uh, that one has 25 years of background um, from the end of the Cold War and the fall of the wall and Gorbachev's uh, opening up to, to new possibilities that the West basically decided not to respond to, but uh, instead I had this triumphalist idea of expanding NATO and of course there are limits to how far that philosophy can be practiced. How's it been covered there over in Sweden? Uh, you know, how's the media covering it? Is it balanced coverage of uh, what's happening in Ukraine, do you think, or is it one-sided? Not, not at all. Not at all. Um, not at all. And the history behind this conflict, which is, as I said, much further, goes much further back, um, it doesn't exist here. There's a very uniform media structure in this country. Um, I'm sad to say that that is the case. I've lived here for 43 years, but I'm a Danish citizen. I've done my research in this country. And it has become worse over time. Earlier it was possible. You know, in the days of Olaf Palme, you could have common security. You dis discuss the OSCE um, confidence and, and uh, security building measures. Uh, there was a clear understanding, which, you know, any intelligent person would say that we can only have security with each other, not against each other. And so the expansion of uh, NATO the whole way around Russia has been counterproductive. Just want to show while you're on the line our video uh, that we've uh, got in show of you is this. It's US military hardware moving through Latvia. Uh, um, what do you make of that? It's ironic, isn't it, that, you know, um, that's NATO machinery, OK, moving through a NATO area. But why is it OK to do that? But when Russia wants to hold drills on its own territory, everybody gets nervous. Well, if you want a real um, polemic answer, I would say this is what the military uh, do in all countries when there's a crisis and a move upwards in confrontation and the rhetoric becomes nasty. Secondly, and that's what men do. Uh, this tit for tat helps nobody. Whenever Russia comes close to the border with its airplanes, um, it, it's an argument in the in the hands served on a on a silver brick for the uh, pro, pro NATO, pro militarists in the West, and the same goes the other way. Uh, that's why we need peace research, we need peace diplomacy, we do need all, everything else but this kind of tit for tat, because one day it could go out of hand. But neither your country, nor my country, nor anybody in the West, nor the United States has any advice, advisors to their presidents of uh, peace conflict understanding, conflict resolution, reconciliation are all the things the world needs. But what they have is tons of nuclear weapons, a military, industrial, media, academic complex and all that. We, we, we're, living up in a total, we're living in a totally absurd world in which everybody's prepared for, for warfare, is able to fight it, and nobody's prepared for peace. 
Mm. And, you know, this is against the UN Charter, this is against the wishes of everybody around the world. I've just come back from Iran. The Iranian peace, people want peace with the West, but they can't get it. Jan, thank you for being on the programme. Voice of Sense, I'm sure many people say you are. Jan Ober, director of a Swedish pro-peace think tank. Thanks for your thoughts.